welcome to You Talking to Me. We are facing a power game these days between the European Parliament and the European Council, and we still don't know who is going to be the president of the next commission. And to talk about this, I'd like to welcome here in our studio in Brussels, Zoltan Vik, he's the Brussels correspondent from Hungarian radio MTVA. Hi, Zoltan. Hi, Daniel. It's good to be here again. And we have Jan Antonin Noges. Uh, he is the Brussels correspondent from French BFM Business. Hello, Hi, Jan Antonin. And on the phone, we have Lisa Schöniger from German radio network AMS. Hi to Bielefeld. Hi, Lisa. Hi, everybody. Okay, Lisa, we are going to come back to you later on, speaking about the power game between the Parliament and the Council, Jan Antoni. Uh, the score right now is 1-1, one, one, one each. Uh, who is going to be the strongest? Who is going to win the game? Uh, regarding the presidency of the Commission, let's say that uh, by in the past, the European Parliament and the European Council simply didn't play in the same league. Now we're saying that they're playing a match one against the other. You're saying it's one to one. Well, at least the European Parliament, which is a pretty, let's say, a lightweight compared to the European Council, uh, can have the last word. So that already, in a way, is a victory for Euro the European Parliament at this point. But I think that in the end, as it's happened many times in the past months and years, the European Council will do whatever it wants, taking into account the European Parliament. But I think that the European Council, in the end, is going to win. And just to, uh, basically the Juncker side is saying, oh, the European Council can't do whatever it wants because it has to take into account the European Parliament. But bear in mind that Juncker is only known by 8% of the European population. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Europe isn't really, really a democracy at this point, but it's making great progress. Do you think it was the right decision of the parliament uh, to decide two days after the elections and on the same day the heads of government met in Brussels uh, to support Jean-Claude Juncker as a candidate? Well, it was the deal from the start. So they, it, it, there was a deal between the European uh, political families that the first family, uh, the first European party to win the election uh, could introduce the name of its head of its candidate for the commission. Well, Jean-Claude Juncker got, I don't know what is the count now, it's 217 vote, uh, seats in the European Parliament for the EPP against one, 185 for the Socialists. Well, clearly the EPP won, and I mean, it was the rule of the game. The EPP was supposed to uh, introduce its candidate. And Zoltan, uh, do you think uh, European democracy is in danger if none of the five of the big five leading candidates that were running in these elections, if none of them is going to be the president of the commission? I wouldn't say that there is a danger or there will be uh, too much of an institutional crisis, but surely uh, we can be uh, we can see uh, the thing that the whole European uh, set of institutions will be ridiculed, and uh, it's a slap in the face of many uh, European uh, voters who were confident uh, under the impressions given by the European political families, the the, the, the parties, the Spitzenkandidaten, the, the top uh, candidates, and the uh, and the member states themselves that this. Will be this would be the, the the process this year the two uh, 2014 elections will be different. Now we can see that they are really really different. But uh, uh, right now, if the member states say no, we didn't mean uh, it, and the EPP uh, governments uh, say that okay, there was the Dublin summit, we endorsed our candidate, but we changed our mind. It's it, it may have serious consequences for the whole credibility of the whole European project. Do the people in Hungary care about that? Uh, when you say, uh, when, when, when you mentioned that only 8% knows uh, uh, Mr. Juncker by name, I think uh, this is also a good thing because uh, in Hungary, I think 2%. But the thing is that there was a general agreement between the political actors in Europe that this time uh, the parliamentary elections uh, uh, would reflect a kind of uh, popular uh, uh, set of uh, uh, intentions, uh, what to do uh, inside Europe. And I think on the political community, or let's say in a, a ruder term, the elite in Hungary, it is a bad sign that uh, their intentions are not taken into consideration. 
Okay, we're going to look uh, to Germany. Uh, Lisa, uh, in Germany, many uh, journalists were uh, angry at the council and they wrote in comments that this is anti-democratic what they decided. What about the people in Germany? Uh, do, would they prefer Jean-Claude Juncker or would they prefer the other leading candidate, Martin Schulz, the socialist, uh, being a German? What do you think? Well, I don't think that it's so much about being German or not. I think um, it's all about the reliability because um, yeah, the turnout of voters was very high um, this time in Germany for the European elections and I think polit yeah, the politicians and also the journalists want to keep it that way and um, if the um, council decides not to nominate the, um, the candidate that won the elections, I think this would be a crack in the reliability of all this procedure. So I think the people would, wouldn't want to see um, somebody, somebody else than Juncker. And what about Angela Merkel, Lisa? Uh, she was quite vague right after the elections. Now she says that she's going to support uh, Jean-Claude Juncker. What do you think? Is she going to do that until the end? Um, I think so, yes. But uh, you said she's vague. I mean, that's her strategy in politics. Um, all the time. I mean, she's always calming down everybody. And um, I have this picture in mind of um, not Queen Mum, but she's like Mother Merkel. And everybody's um, crying on her shoulder, like um, uh, Hollande or Cameron, and all, everybody's uh, going or calling her and saying, oh, Mother Merkel, I don't want this. And can you, can you do anything about this? And yeah, I mean, she's like caressing everybody. And she's not somebody who would choose harsh words. So, um, I mean, that's her strategy. But I think she will support Juncker till the end. Zoltan, uh, Viktor Orban, he's from the same family than Angela Merkel, from the same political family. He spoke out not to support Jean-Claude Juncker. What do you think? What is he going to do? Uh, finally, if uh, the, the, uh, we could uh, believe what we have uh, heard just from uh, Lisa, that uh, maybe Orban uh, also has something to ask uh, uh, for uh, from uh, Mrs. Merkel. But I think inside the EPP, uh, such a, a, a at the first instance, brutal attack uh, against uh, Jean-Claude Juncker was quite surprising. And I think that there is some kind of hidden uh, in the background uh, scenario. So I think Mr. Orban is supposed to voice uh, the uh, uh, objections of every member state inside the EPP family who is not content with the uh, nomination of Jean-Claude Juncker. So he's the, uh, I mean, spokesperson for these states, and that's why he can uh, use uh, uh, quite rude uh, expressions to, to underline uh, his message. But finally, uh, I think uh, after many, many weeks, uh, we shall see what will be the outcome, the result of all these uh, uh, sometimes manipulative and vague uh, uh, talks uh, uh, between the, the uh, heads of states and governments. And uh, I cannot exclude any, any, any scenario right now. And uh, Yann Anthony, what about the French uh, President François Hollande? He's not a fan of Jean-Claude Juncker. He didn't want Christine Lagarde, who ruled herself out uh, a few days ago. What do you think? Is he going to make another proposal? Is he coming with Michel Barnier again? Well, the thing is that in, in the past years, I think that the front runner, the main front runner to the European Commission has never made it. So it's always people coming out of the hat in the end. This time we thought it could be different. Uh, regarding Christine Lagarde, regarding Juncker, well, he's not part of the same political family. So obviously, François Hollande being a socialist and Juncker, even if he comes, he calls himself the last uh, communist in, of Luxembourg, I don't think they have the same political ideas. Christine Lagarde, did she really rule herself out of the race? I think she said, I am not a candidate because she cannot, as the head of the IMF in Washington, say that she is a candidate. So, so you think she's still in the game? I, I, I don't think she ruled herself out of the race. Uh, I, what I think is that Michel Barnier, who I saw a few days ago and who looked very down uh, in Dublin, as Zoltan mentioned, because there was the primaries of the EPP and he came and Michel Barnier, who was supported by uh, Victor Orban and who got 40% of the votes in, 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 um, 
in, in, in Dublin for the EPP. Well, he looked very down when he lost uh, to uh, Juncker, but now he he smiles a lot, I, I find. And he could be, the European Parliament likes him. Uh, he was endorsed by a few heads of states and parties and delegations of the EPP. He could be a good candidate. Uh, uh, he could be the one to come out of the hat in the end and become the president of the commission. That's my bet. You were asking about bets and scores. I would say that would be my bet. And also because François Hollande and the rest of Europe might want to give something to France because of the poor results, uh, well, at least the strong results of the Front National and the uh, far right in France. Uh, this could be some kind of a counterpart. Okay, we are uh, almost at the end, but uh, let's listen to somebody of the EPP who said last week in our show that Juncker is going to be the one, and he explained what he's going to do if he's not the one. I will vote no because I do not want to betray my voters. I promised my voters that I will vote for the winner of the European elections. This is in this case Juncker, and if I would do it differently, then I would betray my voters. So this was Elmar Brok. Uh, he is re-elected member of the European Parliament. Um, Lisa, what do you think? Is the Parliament really going to vote no in case the Jean Claude Juncker is not the candidate? Well, I don't. Know, I don't know if I can answer this question, but I think what Emma Brook just said was um, a good, um, yeah, and a good impression how the people in Germany think. I mean, Emma Brook is German, and um, he's really like all about this reliability. He says, "I, I wanted to vote for the for the win, for the winner," and um, he wants to do that. And if he doesn't, I think, or if he if he if he wouldn't do that, I think that would be a real problem for him and his. Um, circle of voters because he's he's always um, he's a lot around here around Bielefeld where I'm sitting right now and um, he has really much contact to his voters and I think they would ask um, not that nice questions to him if he would um, say well then just put someone else in place. Okay, speaking about uh, Germans, last question in the parliament, we have got uh, Manfred Weber from the CSU elected uh, as the president of the group of the PPP, EPP. Uh, we have uh, Martin Schulz, who is going to be most probably the uh, chief of the socialists again. We have Rebecca Harms from the Greens, who is the chief uh, uh, of the Green Group. We have Gabi Zimmer, who is the, yes, the chief. Uh, <laughs> so yes, Jan yeah, Antoni, the, the, the question is for the you. Of France? Um, no, no, I mean, are the Germans ruling Europe, at well, least in the European there Parliament. Been, there, there have been ruling for, for a while now. And especially since, even if you mentioned Manfred Weber, before they had the EPP was headed, the EPP group in the European Parliament was headed by Joseph Dohl, who's a French, but from Alsace, and who is said to be more German than French, actually. So uh, I, I'm not sure the, the fact that Manfred Weber, Weber, Weber comes is, is uh, something extremely new. Well, I think that the Germans are... Uh, leading the European Union, that's uh, for sure. And that's that's also one of the reasons why at the head of the European Commission they're considering uh, a French. Okay, um, these people are going to be elected uh, during the next weeks and meanwhile the discussion about the next president of the European Commission will go on. We at the end of uh, this show. Thank you, Zoltan, for being here. Thank you, Jan Antoni. Thank you, Daniela. Thank, thank you, you, Lisa, and thank you all. And see you soon on You Talking to Me.